welcome back to my floss tube or welcome if you're new here my name is Caroline and this is my third floss tube um, yeah so welcome if I sound a little bit like creaky or if I look a little bit tired that's because it's quite early here in the morning I'm trying to film this before I start work to work I will work from home today and I thought I would get this in beforehand. It's still not quite light outside. It's very rainy today. Um, so I have all my lights on in my room. I think the light should be fine. Um, yeah, it's November, what is it? November, Friday, November 3rd. And yeah, it's typical November weather here. It's rainy, it's cold. I doubt you will see the sun today, but um, I quite like it because that means a lot of stitchy time for me on the couch this evening uh, with my cat on my lap. And that brings me to my first uh, point. I forgot my cat. No, <laughs> I don't, didn't forget my cat at all, um, like literally, but I forgot to show you a few pictures of him uh, I promised in my last video. So I want to remedy that today. So here he is. This is Mario. I wrote it down, down in my notes as well. So this time I won't forget. Mario is such a uh, super sweet boy. He is Greek. I brought him home from Kars with me in uh, the beginning of July when I was there on vacation. And a sweet lady that uh, has a hotel there rescued him as a kitten. He was really, really sick. And yeah, I fell in love with my Greek man <laughs> and, and brought him home. So when I, f I was there on my own for a vacation and when I uh, when he first um, came uh, yeah to to my hotel room there um, I then uh, talked to my husband on the phone and I said well you know there's a Greek guy in my bed and his name is Mario <laughs> and my husband was just like oh, okay is he purring yeah a cat <laughs> so he knows me quite well don't know did I did I tell that story already? I don't know if yes, sorry. I'm just obsessed with my cat and cats in general. And yeah, he um, was super, super thin at the beginning. He had a big wound in, on his head, uh, but he gained uh, a lot of weight already. He's super energetic, um, super sweet as well. Very cuddly, likes to sleep right next to us, always have to like be in contact, um, greets me when I'm gone and then come back and get a kiss. So yeah, he he's really sweet and he does not play with my threads or my yarn um, yet. <laughs> I hope it will stay that way. I can, his favorite uh, toy is a measuring tape. Uh, he really, really loves that two pieces. Um, so he has his own measuring tape that we only use for him and he can destroy it if he wants to. So enough cat talk though uh, for now. Um, yeah, anything else before we start? Um, I have my plants here. So if I look down, I have my notes here. I started uh, using Notion uh for uh, all my cross stitch uh stuff or my um planning my pattern database i have my floss tube notes on there and um i let me see i forgot to look her name up but there's a video of, oh yeah, Bobo Chassis Stitches, I will also link her below. Uh, she has a video uh, how she uses Notion for her uh, cross stitch and I got a lot of inspiration from her and I've been Notion for my sewing patterns already so I just had to tweak it a little bit for a cross stitch 
um, and I'm now using that to keep track of uh, what patterns I have, what lips I have. Um, yeah, so for me this works really really well. I was thinking about buying a book of days for next year because everyone is like holding their beautiful stickered books into the camera. But I just know that like mid-February I won't do it anymore because I want to uh, have this um, anti-digitally so that I can access it from my phone as well and don't have to carry around a book with me. So yeah, that's that. Now let's get onto cross stitch and at the end some knitting as well. What do I have for you today? I have a cross stitch finish. I have a new start. I have whips. I have plans. I have all haul. I have all. <laughs> That's the way around. And as I said, in the end, I have some knitting. I have one knitting finish, and then knitting almost finish. Yeah. So let's start with finishes. I finished. Um, uh, I started and finished a piece. I started this on November. October 22nd, no, October 26th, sorry. <laughs> um, I started this October 26th because I wanted to do a little fall small that I can make a pillow out of. I, I want to start, um, yeah, creating some smalls in general um, for decoration and um, that's what I did. So I looked through my stuff and found the pattern called Grateful Heart uh, by Twin Peak Primitives. So this, the version I have is from the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine, the 2022 fall issue. And But she just released it, I think, on the 24th uh, of October this year on her Etsy or website uh, as well. So I will link it down below. And uh, you can see up there, I started it and didn't realize that it wasn't as small as I thought it would be. The size is 137 by 97. So I started this and I thought like, okay, well then it's going to be a bigger pillow. But um, yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> this is my piece. So as you can see, there's um, something missing there. I started with uh, the quote, with the words, and then the basket, it's, the basket is super, super cute, I love it, and then the pumpkins, and then I just couldn't do it anymore, because the pattern itself is nice, I like the design, that's why I chose it. The problem with this is mainly the fabric. I'm using 18 count beige Ada. It's like a no-name Ada. It's stiff. It's not like super stiff, but it's stiff. But the real problem are the holes. They're so, so tiny and stiff. And I didn't find a needle I could get through without like really pulling and my, my fingertips started to hurt. I used a 24, a 26, a 28, different brands. It was just a pain to stitch and so hard to stitch. My stitches are not super neat on this. I mean, it's fine from a distance, but still. And so when I got to like this point, I realized that's a nice square. I, I just add this little star there and I'm done. So this is going to be um, made into a pillow probably this weekend and then I can show you an FFO next time I film. Um, one more thing with that pattern, the magazine pattern, the um, um, symbols were quite light. Uh, I have it on my iPad and I could zoom in but even so it was hard to distinguish some of them. I hope the um, sing single pattern that she released will be different. I don't know, obviously. But yeah, I'm happy with my finish. I'll show you once again. Um, I'll probably do like a black trim or something so that I can um, yeah, balance out the black of the, um, afterwards there. 
Um, yeah, I finished that one November 31st. Yeah, on Halloween day. I finished that one. Okay, uh, that's it for my finishes. <laughs> um, let's do new starts next. Aside from that small that I started and finished, I also have a uh, very special new start. I started uh, a stitch along on November 1st. So uh, if you have seen my last video, I talked about uh, the pattern called Lettre Carme or Crimson Letters by Reflet de Soie. And um, I asked if someone would be interested in starting a stitch along with me. And Katie from the Peacock Stitcher, who is a new floss tuber as well, so check out her video. Um, she reached out to me on Instagram and said that she already uh, ordered a pattern and that she would want to start it with me. So we chatted on Instagram and decided to start on November 1st. I am doing mine almost um, as called for, so I'm doing the red version because that's what spoke to me. And um, yeah, but I'm doing a different fab kind of fabric. And Katie is uh, doing a blue version of it, so I'm really, really curious to see how this is going to uh, turn out in the end. Um, oh yeah, and if you want to um, see what we're up to or join us, please do. The uh, hashtag is Crimson Letters Sal. Crimson Letters Sal. <laughs> um, I'll put it here as well. Um, yeah. So this is my start. Look. First, I'm gonna show you my super cute needle miter that I made myself. Isn't that adorable? Now, but now to the pattern. Um, this is not all I have. I have the first row all the way there done. Um, I'm gonna insert uh, a picture as well for you just now. Um, that's the first row I did and then I started down here. And I don't want to take this out of the Q-snap right now because I'm working on it. So yeah, um, what am I using? I debated using the um, hold it there. I debated using the silks, but then decided against it and instead bought the cotton floss. But I bought anchor floss because, uh, as I may have said once before, it's more readily available here, and I could look at the colors myself. The colors I'm using are Anchor 1006 and 44. And 44 is the darker red, I think. Um, the fabric I'm using is a very special one. It's an X2 design. It's called Seashell and it's 46 count. So yeah, I've never before stitched on 46 count. And I was a little bit scared of it, uh, intimidated. Uh, and the first letter uh, I did was hard. I thought, okay, this is super, super tiny. But once you get into the rhythm, it's like, for me, it's almost the same as like 40 count, stitching on 40 count. The stitches are so tiny and neat and wonderful. It's after that horrible Ada, this fabric of hers is so soft and super, super nice to stitch. I would rather stitch all my pieces on this than on that 18 count Ada, to be honest. Um, yeah, I love the, the, the color. It's quite coming through quite true here, I think. It's like those dusty light pink mauve tone. And yeah, super, super nice. Love the pattern, it's lovely to stitch. And I can't wait to get back to this. Anything else? No. So that's my new start. Okay, then I have some whips for you. 
This time I don't have that many whips. I mean I have three. They're over there. Yeah, I have three. So let's start with my hippo. This is painted hippo by Mommy's Hobbies Design. I have it in my Greek evil eye bag. And my plan for this is to stitch one page a month. So I buckled down in October and I did it. And you can see now that you can see something. So that's the page I did plus some like splotches over there because I like to end my threads when I can. So like um, stitch all that I have on my needle if it's not too far out. And that way I also hope to prevent those page lines. So you can see we have an ear. <laughs> He's um, coming together super, super nicely. I love that I now have some color in there and some variation. Of course, it was a little bit slower to stitch than uh, all the black, but much more interesting. I'm stitching this on a 28 count easy grid, 201 10 stitch. And if I will start another full coverage, I will only do it like this because I love the 10 stitch. Yeah. So that's my painted hippo. It's November already, so I'm gonna talk about this in plans as well, but there will be uh, a third page. I'm not sure yet if I want, will do this one or this one. But probably this and then do that one in December because this, it's more black and in December I don't have some other plans so I don't know uh, how it will go uh, time wise. So that's that. Then we have Autumn Meditation. This is Autumn Meditation by Carolyn Manning. Mine is from uh, Just Cross Stitch magazine from, let me get my, December 2020. I haven't found it anywhere else, so you probably have to get the magazine if you want that piece, um, but you can um, like get a digital copy of that online if you want to. So I am stitching this on a 32 count Belfast linen um, dyed by Nicholas Flamel design on Etsy and it's in the colorway little sampler collection so there were like six fat eights in there and this is where I am. Yeah. So uh, I think I need to make a design board sometime soon but for now I think it will look like this yeah okay so um, I had hoped to finish this but I, I didn't obviously so that's the middle there that's the top and that's the corner so I have a lot done but as I already mentioned once, there is so there are so many like color changes in this. You know, like a few stitches here and there, and then a color change. And I don't want to carry my thread because um, you can see it behind this very light fabric. So I had to stop for a little bit. We'll see it. Maybe I will finish this this fall in November. Still, I don't know if I don't. I will finish it next year. It's super beautiful, but just takes a lot of time to, to stitch. So yeah, that's my autumn meditation. Okay, um, had to do a, a quick battery change there. Um, and I'm back with my last whip for this round. And it's a special whip. Do you know what's in there? It's my Chatelaine. So, on, when was it? October 31st in the evening, I didn't have any Halloween plans. 
So I was at home and I wanted to stitch in a whip before because I knew that I would start the crimson letters uh, the next morning. So I looked through my whips and um, yeah, just thought, ah, let's get some stitches into this. And I did. And once, oh, I'll show you first. So this is where I am. I hope it will focus. I think it is. It does. So um, yeah, I had. Um, I will show you here where I was before and here where I am. So I just go around and around. You stitch this shadow lines from the center point out, and I had to finish uh, some um, petite treasure braid, the gold um, back stitching. Not my favorite part, but it looks stunning. And then just the stitches around are quite quick. The fabric is a 32 count uh, Lugana in the color Terracotta, just from Swigard. And I love how it pairs with the blues and the teals and the gold. And it's just screaming Tuscany to me. So I'm, I'm working outwards and it's a really small piece. And uh, so I hope to get it finished not in a not too distant future because I have a big shadow lane all kitted up but I will not start it until this one is finished. So yeah, I'm stitching on this. Um, I have it still on my, um, on my Q-snap because I want to get some progress into this sill. Uh, no, be no beads on there yet. Um, I'm probably going to do that at the end since this is not too big I'm not sure yet but yeah that's my shadow line didn't didn't um, take that out since I started it in August for my birthday birthday sorry <laughs> very German pronunciation there um, yeah one more look it's so lovely I love it I love it I love it So that's it for whips for this time and I mean it's only been two weeks, three weeks, I don't know exactly, quick zipper there and yeah next up uh, I want to show you some haul I have over there. Sorry. <laughs> okay, first, um, I have been talking about the Just Cross Stitch magazine for a bit uh, already. And I was browsing online and, that I, and I saw that they had really old issues on a DVD you could purchase, purchase. So I did that and I got two of them. I got the just Cross Stitch Collection 1991 to 2000 and I got Just Cross Stitch Collection 2001 to 2010 and I have to say I looked through all of them a little bit already in that one um, there are not too many stitches that I would do just to like very old-fashioned there are a few really, really beautiful gems in there though. And it's just super nice to look through magazines that are almost as old as I am. So I was born in 89, so the first magazine I was um, two years old. And uh, yeah, just it's just very, very cute to see and um, interesting. And then this one, there are a ton of gorgeous gorgeous stitches in there and uh, yeah I'm marking my favorites and you will see some pop up soon. I won't say anything else right now because I'm gonna talk about that in plants. And then I got some fabric. First I got I am in the fabric of the month club by XG Design. So that's one of the few that I can take part in because as I said um, 
here in Austria it's hard to get stuff and I can't very well take part in a fabric club from, from the UK or from the US because I would have to pay customs for every single shipping which is just not, yeah, not doable. So I joined the one from XG Design. I'm in the Brides Club. Um, I get a 36 count, what is it, fat quarter? Fat quarter. And I got my first one in October. And it's this one. It's, okay, it's showing up very, very, uh, yeah, I think that's the right color. It's called Pure Orange. And it's pure orange. Uh, it's super, super nice. I love her fabrics. And yeah. Can you see this? Yes. It's not really modeled, as you can see. It's just a wonderful orange. And I'm sure I will find something wonderful for that one. Then, because one piece of fabric can't travel alone. I also got the seashell 46 count that you saw earlier for my um, for my lettre carme. I didn't originally purchase this for uh, that uh, stitch along, but it was just the perfect fit, so awesome. And then, because I'm crazy, I also got a 56 count linen from XG Design in the color khaki green. That's just a fat eight because it's a 56 count. And it's gorgeous. It's exactly like the color says. It's showing up more green, gray and blue on the camera. In real life it's more... no, not really. No, it doesn't really show up. Oh well. Maybe like now it's more green in real life, but yeah. I have no pl immediate plans for this. I will probably start with a small, tiny piece. I just am just curious how it is to stitch on such a high fabric count. Um, yeah, so I got this. And then I got some more fabric. I plan to start um, December by the Cricut Collection on November 30th and I was looking through my stash what fabric to use and I had a fabric I thought I might use but I was not quite happy with it so I scrolled through Etsy and I found a wonderful blue fabric uh, from Nicolas Flamel but it was only available in 40 count. So I reached out to her and asked if she had that in uh, in a 32 count, which I need for my Cricut collection monthlies. And she was so nice and dyed one especially for me. And it's called Oliver Twist. I think the 40 count is still available on Etsy, but if it's not, you can reach out to her. And she will do it for you, I guess. And it's that one. It's um, a wonderful, like, icy blue. It's in... Let me change the light a little bit. Uh, it's not as bright in real life as it is shown here. Yeah, it's a fat quarter of just a wonderful, wonderful blue with, yeah, now it's coming across, I think. Uh, my face is very yellow, but the fabric is nice, which is all that counts. <laughs> um, very, very nice blue with just a little bit of modeling. So I got that, and again, you know what's coming? A fabric can't travel alone. So I also got a set and because I enjoyed uh, the 46 count so much, I got some more 40 count um, to stitch on. And it's the Secrets of Great Grandma. They are all fat quarters, I think. But yeah, there is uh, like a beige gray I can always use. 
there is a light, yeah, it's very good, actually. A light pink. And this one. This is a, like a brown, gray, but with some pinkish flecks. And I have a start plant for the beginning of December that I think this one would be perfect for. I'm not going to tell you any more about that yet because I still wait uh, for my threads to come. I ordered them on one to three stitch. So yeah, we will see what I'm going to use for that, uh, but I will talk about it in my next video, probably. Um, now I want to mention some floss tubers I enjoyed watching in the last weeks. Okay, whom did I watch? I already mentioned Katie from the Peacock Stitcher that I am doing the stitch along with. She has one video out yet, I think. Um, but I know that she's planning to do uh, one more um, very soon, or maybe it's out already when you're seeing this. Then I um, watched Frala Knits. Um, she is a really lovely lady from, from Atlantic Canada. And I found her first on Instagram because she, she started Dutch Beauty for the Back to School style as well, but she's also doing some wonderful knitting and um, quilting. So yeah, go and check her out. And then I watched Erika from Fibers and Floss. She is a new floss tuber as well. But if you are a regular watcher from Samantha the Higa Stitcher, you have already seen her because she's her friend. And she was encouraged to make her own floss tube. And oh my god, her projects are amazing. Um, I wish I could knit like her. Her project bags she makes are just gorgeous. Um, she's lovely to listen to. She's a natural. So yeah, really, really big recommendation there. And then I watched a new video from Debbie, uh, Mama Bear Stitchery. And uh, yeah, I, first I love her Scottish accent. <laughs> and then all her projects really speak to me as well. She does a variety, she does uh, long dogs and uh, full coverages, she does kits, she does uh, dimensions, golds. It's very versatile and super, super nice uh, to watch. And she's doing a thing um, she calls 12 days of stitch mass. Um, I think she's planning to release a video in the next few weeks or days uh, we're talking more about that and the reason I mentioned that is because I'm doing a similar thing um, in December uh, which takes me into my plans already so I will talk about my cross stitch plans now and then show you what I have for knitting so if you are not interested in my knitting you can um, just yeah turn off after my plans or now of course <laughs> I won't I won't keep you if you don't want to that sounded weird wow. plans uh, I am um, of course for November planning to do my page for my painted hippo I want to stitch some more on my crimson letters because it's wonderful to stitch on. Then I'm going to, on a trip um, to Amsterdam next weekend and I'm thinking about what project to bring because I don't want to bring my second tablet with my pattern keeper on there. And I don't want to bring the um, crimson letters because stitching on 46 count when you're traveling is not the best idea. So I will probably bring my shadow lane without the beads and stuff, of course, um, because it's quite small to bring, just the fabric and stuff. So it's probably going to be that. 
And then, one more thing, if you remember, in there I have my Christmas Quaker that I was so sad about last time because I made a mistake and had to had thought that I would have to frog quite a bit and it's not fun to frog. But I found some more fabric. Apparently I bought one whole yard of that fabric because it was on sale. I just can restart and don't have to frog this, which is super lovely. Maybe I will restart that in November, maybe not. I'm not sure yet. So that's that. And then big plans. Big plans. So, uh, as I said, uh, Mama Bear Stitchery is doing a 12 days of stitch mess. And before I heard that, I knew about 12 by 12 for the new year, but I know that it would stress me out to get like only one hour of a new start and then I don't have any plans for New Year's Eve but I don't want to be stitching the whole evening either so, and maybe I will want to go to bed at like 10 <laughs> so I am going to do a stitchy advent calendar so as I mentioned already I want to have some more smalls that I can stitch on, that I can finish, that I can make into pillows or frame and have some decorations out and just like I have a lot of big projects on the go and I want some smalls. Um, yes, so my plan is to start a new project each day starting December 1st through December 24th where our main Christmas celebrations are. That's 24 new studs. <laughs> yes, I'm crazy. Um, my plan is to start 19 small, smallish projects and five bigger ones. Why five bigger ones? So I have some bigger um, stitches already planned. I have a stitch along, two stitch along starts planned for December. I have some beautiful winter or Christmassy projects planned that I want to start in December and I had to fit those in. So what I'm going to do is do a um, new start of a bigger or big project on every Sunday in December. So that's the 3rd, the 10th, the 17th, oh, um, I, well, I'm going to figure that out and then I'm going to do a, a big one on the 24th as well and right now I'm not sure if the 24th is a Sunday as well, let me check, that's why I was confused. Uh, so the 24th is a Sunday, so there will be only, only <laughs> four big pieces and 20 smaller ones, um, which is fine by me. And so the four big ones, I will decide beforehand when I'm going to start what, because I have, as I said, some stitch along starts planned. And then I will have 20 small, really small, like I think the smallest I've picked out are like 50 by 50s and up to like maybe maximum 100 by 100 stitches but something in that range and yeah i will pick those 20 out i will kick them up and put them into piles and then i give them to my husband and he will shuffle them around put them in some um, drawstring fabric bags i got and put a number on them so I won't know what um, small I will start on what day and have a little bit of a surprise element there as well. Yeah, so if you want to maybe participate, maybe only do like the Sundays or yeah, this is the hashtag I'm going to use. It's uh, going to be Stitchy Advent 2023 and yeah, I can't wait for December. I have some gorgeous, gorgeous projects, man. I'm not going to show you all of them now because 
first I don't have all of them picked out yet. I'm still kitting up and still getting some um, stuff for them, as I said. Um, <clears throat> I was giving out there. Um, yeah, I, I thought I will just like show you in my December videos what um, pieces I started and maybe also do uh, like an Instagram post each day, if that's interesting. So yeah, that's it for my plans, I think. And also for the cross stitch section of this video. So if you were only here for the cross stitch, thank you so much. And I hope you will be back next time. But if you're also interested in my knitting and I have a finish, yeah, then please stay on and I'm gonna show it to you up close. Okay, knitting. The first thing I finished is my scarf from the boyfriend set. It's a free pattern available available on Ravelry. Ravelry, sorry. <laughs> um, and this is it. It's on the one side. It's it's a little bit of a weird yarn. On the one side, it's really stripy, and then it gets more into like one colored and more like variegated I don't know but yeah it's knit uh, with a um, mistake rip stitch which is also very doable for a beginner like me this is the first ever scarf I finished in my life I would want to say it's the first ever knitting project I finished but I, at least as an adult, let's say it. It's super nice and super uh, soft. It's a merino wool. Um, I could tell you which wool it is. If you want to know, please, um, please let me know. But it's only available here in Europe, I think. So I don't know if it's really interesting to you. Um, it's a good thing that I finished that. I finished that last weekend, I think. And yeah, last weekend, last Sunday, I still need to wash and block this, which I will do tomorrow. And then, um, sorry, I think I'm going to sneeze. The wool. Sorry, if that was loud. The wool makes me sneeze a little bit, so it's good that I will wash it. But this is going to be a present for a friend of mine that I will visit in Amsterdam. I know where she doesn't watch those videos. Um, her favorite color is blue, so I fa thought I would surprise her with that. And then I thought I could show you two finishes today, but I... not quite. <laughs> I have it now in my knitting bag because that one's finished. And this is a scarf for me. A little bit clumsy today. Um, and this one is the Bright Side Scarf from Wool and the Gang, where you hold two yarns together to make this wonderful, um, yeah, variegated look. Let me see. I will put it like this. Yeah, still have to weave my, in my ends, of course. So I'll show you this at first. I started with some yellows, then got to orange, and now I'm on to red. And all I have left is a little bit of yarn. So I probably finish this tonight. I will roll it out. This you just let's do it that way. Um, change colors once one is gone. And it's just a basic garter stitch. It's a merino wool as well. Super, super comfy. And as you can see, it's, it's for me, it's more my colors. <laughs> um, yeah. Super easy to, to do um, with just a basic garter stitch and rows. It's with, I'm using eight millimeter needles. So it's going super quickly as well. Oh. This one will be a finish next time for sure. Yeah. Oh, sorry. 
And now that I have two, one almost two, knitting finishes, sorry, I am thinking what I will knit next. I first I'm gonna show you I finally found some storage space for my knitting stuff. Uh, my diamond painting had to go because I hadn't touched that since April this year. So that's been banned to my basement. And now I have this uh, trolley full of my knitting stuff. And the next things, I'm gonna go pick up the wool now to show you what I want to start. I'm going to try to make my first pair of socks. This is what I picked out for it. It's called Mylan White. Um, yeah, it's a Lana Grossa wool uh, with a little bit of acrylic in there. It's got my colors. It was not very expensive but also not super cheap so that it's like scratchy. My plan is to try basic sock pattern, nothing fancy and using the magic loop technique. Yeah, so I will probably bring this on my trip to Amsterdam because it's easy to travel with. Yes, I'm a little bit intimidated by doing socks, knitting in the round. We'll see, we'll see. And then I also want to make uh, like a triangle scarf. I have a few patterns saved, downloaded from Ravelry already, all free ones. I will share um, the one I'm doing once I decided. And I have right now I have three uh, different color variations I am debating, but. Um, one is with the color change, so I'll probably start with a one colored one. One color. Oh. <laughs> so this is the first one I'm thinking about. It's a fingering weight. It's called from a brand called Chapel Tauberball. It's a magic ball. And I think Erica showed the, this brand in her last video as well. It's a German brand. And I love the colors again, and yeah, I think this could it's could be quite nice. I have a second one of of those, and for like a, just a little bit of a lighter or scarf, I could wear inside. And then I have that one, and I already lost the label. I think. Give me a minute. didn't want to add it again. <laughs> uh, got the other one with a label on there. It's Polana Laos. Uh, Merino. Yeah, nothing else on there much. 4.5 to 5.5 millimeter needles. Don't know what to look for yet. Made in Italy. With a German brand as well. This one It's so soft, it is incredible. Can you see that? Oh, and the colors. And the colors. So yeah. Can you help me? Which one would you choose? For, this one is really soft as well. So this, this is just more like cloud-like. Which one would you do first? Okay, this one fits my shirt better. This one fits my cardigan. Help me pick out what to start next. Yeah, but that's it. That's it. It's so funny, in the beginning of a video, I'm always like, what do I say? How do I do this? And, like, hey. and then I get get more comfortable in front of the camera and just talking like I would talk to a friend. Um, so yeah, still amps. <laughs> Probably won't get rid of them completely. 
But thank you. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for all your lovely comments on my videos and for reaching out to me. If you want to write to me on Instagram, please do so. And um, I love to hear from you. And yeah, I plan to film again in two weeks time. So that's then the 18th of November, I think. Um, and share some more of maybe of my December plans, maybe some big pieces I already picked out. And until then, have a nice day, happy stitching, happy knitting, happy crafting, and yeah, see you soon. <laughs> Bye!